Hello, welcome back. And indeed, welcome back to Sasha. So you may have seen her amazing presentation yesterday where she wowed us and froze us in time yes. somewhat with her Correct. designs. And um, I, we are going to extend that, I believe, and so add to that. So please stay around for the next hour or so. And over to you, Sasha. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to see you again. Um, and uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, so. My name is uh, Sasha Vinagradova. Uh, I am a digital art, um, art director and digital artist. You can find my work at sashavinagradova.com or uh, uh, this is my um, Instagram. And um, what do I do now? Like uh, right now, I am a digital artist at the game company called Parallel. Um, and uh, my job is to create visuals like this. So lots of uh, sci-fi related stuff, lots of uh, character um, development. Um, but before all this, before the game art, I used to work, um, I used to do key art for um, TV shows and movies. Um, this is some of my work. I used to work at, uh, for Game of Thrones. Um, I have some, um, um, Key art for key art for Crown, uh, for Homecom Homecoming, um, House of the Dragons is one of the most uh, notable works. Um, after my work in key art industry, I worked at the Mill as an art director, um, working with a variety of different different clients, um, doing frames, lots of lots of frames using 3D, Cinema, uh, Redshift. Um, having lots of fun and um, uh, working actually with Wusan, uh, who had amazing presentation earlier uh, and uh, even had a chance to be in commercial. After that, I worked as an art director in Apple TV, uh, again, working on a variety of different TV shows, creating key art for it, um, had a chance working on Vision Pro. and. Uh, my one of my favorite uh, side projects. I love doing book covers, uh, fantasy book covers. Um, and uh, also, I do love personal projects. They're very, very important for me. Uh, that's where I can um, really explore uh, creativity and you know not to have a brief. So that is a short kind of outline of uh, what I do. And um, what are we doing today? So yesterday, we were uh, uh, exploring Pyro, uh, but we took it in some other route. Uh, I was uh, showing how to create ice with Pyro. Um, and uh, that was my uh, yesterday's presentation. But today, we going to burn the rose, why not? I'm just destroying flowers in a variety of creative ways. So uh, let me show you uh, what are we going to work on today. So um, I'll try to um, walk you through this uh, setup, how to create fire, and how to create this um, you know, coal-like material, um, how to create um, uh, embers flying around, how to set up camera and lighting. So let's start, right? Um, here I have C4D open. I already have my um, uh, layout uh, loaded. And uh, let's open a file. So this rose came from Sketchfab. Uh, from a person called Bandit, and I'm really appreciative uh, of this model. It's really, really good looking. Um, and um, it, as I said, it already has models, uh, has textures. So before we start playing with Pyro, I wanted to do very, very simple uh, lighting setup. Um, so when we um, have fire, it looks a little better. So let's start with um, our um, general uh, project setup. So I'm going to work with a square format. So changing it to uh, 1280 by 12, 1280 and creating a camera. 
uh, switching to the camera and uh, uh, locating my camera angle uh, to what I uh, think would be a good composition. And before that, I actually going to adjust my focal length to 50, so it's not uh, as wide angle. And um, what I want to have, I want, uh, I want to have a backdrop behind it. And in order to create a backdrop, which is 90, 90 degrees uh, perpendicular to the camera, I'm going uh, to hold Alt and uh, add plane. So actually not Alt, Shift. So it's in this particular position. Uh, what happened is I created a plane, which is in the same uh, coordinates as my camera. So now, when I'm in local coordinates, I can just move my plane behind, hold shift for 90 degrees. So now it's uh, right behind my camera. And uh, it doesn't matter where I go, like how I locate my camera, because plane is the child of this camera. Uh, that plane is always behind my camera. So um, let me uh, bring back um, the previous uh, angle. Let's click play. And um, for just for now, I'm going to switch to uh, gray materials uh, so I can work with light better. So I, I'm not distracted with my materials. I only can see uh, my lighting. So in order to uh, create lighting, let's um, bring a, a dome. Let's bring a dome light. So I'm going to create dome light. Um, and if you uh, didn't explore um, Asset Manager, please do. It's awesome. It has great uh, HD HDRI options. Uh, but for this particular setup, I'm going to use one of the HDRIs I already used. Um, so, and it's this one. I'm just going to click on my dome, uh, get to this path, throw my HDRI in here. And immediately, um, I see that there is a render. Um, so uh, I'm going to rotate it a little bit. I want my lighting to be from a side. Um, and uh, you can see that uh, my HDRI is actually warm. Um, I don't want it to be warm. I'm going to adjust it to uh, neutral color. So I'm going to go to object. Uh, and uh, change my saturation to zero. Uh, let me adjust um, my uh, intensity of my HDRI to 0.5. It's a little too intense. Maybe um, maybe 0.3. And I'm going to bring area light, and I'm going to position it in front, not in front, above my rows. Uh, so you see, I just I just quit my camera. And I see in my viewport what I see in my this viewport. But I want to see through my camera. So I'm going to adjust my uh, auto to RC, RS camera. So now, no matter what I do in here, I see through my camera. I'm going to select my light, uh, switch to uh, rotate mode, uh, hold shift so it's um, you know uh, 10, uh, 20, 30 degrees, so I can uh, switch it to 90 degrees. OK. Um, and position it above my, cam uh, my rows, uh, adjust the size, and um, adjust intensity. So maybe, maybe something like this. Um, and um, actually, something like this. And from here, uh, let's start playing with Pyro. So I'm going to select my rows, and I'm going to add Pyro. So Shift C. I already have uh, start ty uh, typing Pyro, and I'm going to pick Pyro emitter. So um, with my Pyro emitter, um, I have now Pyro emitter and Pyro output, and those are two places where I can control my simulation. Um, if you click Control D, uh, which brings you to our project settings, um, you can find that this simulation here is exactly the same as the Spyro output. It's just easier way to uh, go back to those settings. Um, 
So let's, cl let's click play. I'm, I'm going to temporarily uh, stop my IPR. And you can see that we have fire in our scene. Let me hide um, background at, uh, with my HDRI so we can see it better. And I'm going to uh, hide plane only from the viewport, but not from my render. Um, but as you can see, our rose is on fire. It looks kind of funny. Uh, what's happening with this? Why is it? Why it looks funny? Um, if you go to emitter settings and see thickness, right now it's 10 centimeters. It creates um, outline around my rose, which is uh, 10 centimeters, and I'm going to adjust it to 0.5. Click play, and immediately I actually see outline of my rose, um, and it's looking better. But as you can see, simulation is kind of low res. Um, and I, want, I, I really want to see a, um, better quality. I want to see more details. So uh, how do I do that? I go to Pyro Output, Pyro Scene, and there is my voxel size. So voxel is like pixel. So you almost can see it here, like all those squares. And all those squares are point, uh, right now, 5 centimeters um, in size. So I'm going to adjust that size to 0.5 and run my simulation again. It's OK. <laughs> uh, and you can see that um, I, I have more details. It looks much better, but uh, with all of that, obviously, my simulation got slower. Um, also, if you look at um, uh, the simulation, you see those repetitive lines, uh, that's happening because we do not have enough uh, calculations between um, every, every second needs more, um, uh, cal more calculations, more sub-steps. So let's adjust sub-step here to two. And uh, it will slow down our simulation even more. <laughs> but we will lose um, that little glitch. Um, so in order to kind of show you uh, results faster, I'm going to actually adjust my voxel size to maybe 0.7. So it runs just a little faster. OK. So I like it, um, but um, I'm going to remove the smoke. For my um, render, I don't need to have a smoke. I only need to have uh, fire. So I'm going to turn off my smoke. Um, if you go to pyrometer, there is a variety of settings. You have density. Density is pretty much your smoke. Like if I remove uh, density, uh, there will be fire. Like you see a little bit of fire, but smoke is gone. Uh, then you have color. So you, if you want to create color uh, simulation, uh, you have temperature. So uh, right now, uh, if I increase temperature, like let's uh, do something dramatic, the uh, intensity of my fire will increase a lot. And actually, let's take a look on it and render viewer, right? So uh, how can I uh, render it? If I click play right now, and uh, again, let's switch to uh, our camera. Um, there is no fire. So in order to add fire, I'm going to go to my pyro output object and turn on density and temperature in here. And I'm going to create a material. And uh, it's called a pyro material, pyro volume. And I'm going to ap apply my pyro volume to a pyro output. So let's play again. And it's a little harder to see in a viewport. Uh, it, um, it will look different. And you see how, um, how much more fire uh, we actually have in our viewport, uh, in our render viewer, uh, than in, in the viewport. Um, so this is a good example where like, it's, it's a good idea to uh, check the actual render. OK. Um, that's good, but right now my entire rose is on fire. I don't 
I don't want fire to be everywhere. I want that fire to be just only in certain places. So um, I can control it by uh, adjusting noise in my, uh, in my uh, emission tag. So here you can find noise. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, change my scale to 200. So um, this, those areas are a little smaller. And I'm going to adjust my brightness uh, to, uh, let's say, minus 44. And let's, let's see. Right now, I have IPR, uh, IPR running. You see I didn't turn it off. So um, it uh, runs even, even slower but uh, we immediately will see it. Uh, so we have less fire, but, um, but uh, that's the result I wanted. Um, I want more details in my, fi uh, in, in my wisps, and I'm going to do it by adjusting, again, my um, pyro uh, uh, voxel size. But before I do that, let me show you also scene. Scene settings um, control our simulations most. So right now it's 100. Let's say I want my fire to be bigger. Um, for that, I'm going to change the scene size to 50. Let, let's, let's go somewhere dramatic. Let, let's do 10. So it means the rose is much smaller. So the fire will be now much larger. So I click play, and you see how, how much farther those wisps went. Uh, that's because it's controlled by this uh, uh, scale, scene scale. Um, obviously, the speed of simulation controlled by time. So right now, I'm not going to uh, render entire you know, timeline, but um, that's where it's the most visible. Um, so before I move on to my materials, I want to have some good results on that fire simulation. So I'm going to just adjust my uh, uh, scene size to 50. Uh, and I'm going to adjust my uh, voxel size to 0.5. Uh, run it. Usually, when you're happy with your results, you would just want to cache the scene. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do it right now, because I don't want to bore you with just sitting through the uh, cache loading. Um, but uh, you can find it in, in here, cache, and it would be cache scene. So let's take a look. OK, so we have, we have wisps of fire. And um, let's move on to our materials. If you want the details on the fire even, you know, to have even more resolution, you can reduce voxel size even more. Um, again, not going to do it right now just don't want to wait on the uh, calculation time. Well, let's move on to materials. So first thing, I want to adjust uh, the um, color of my backdrop. I'm going to create material and apply it to my backdrop. And um, I'm going to t turn on actual materials. So we see um, you know, not only clay mode, but actual colors. Uh, and I want, I want a little bit of color in my backdrop. Like, uh, I want it to be dark gray, not black. That's why I have that backdrop in there. So I'm going to change my roughness to 1. So right now, that highlight disappeared, so it's rough. And I'm going to adjust my uh, uh, diffuse contribution. So we have a little bit of it, but, um, but it's not completely black. OK. So uh, this is uh, looking pretty good. I also can adjust the color of my, actually, I'm not going to adjust any colors of the rose because we're going to burn it. Um, and uh, let me show you the reference um, I've been using. So uh, here's a really cool reference. And I really like uh, um, creating procedural materials. Uh, it's really fun to look at the reference and dissect how you can recreate it. So uh, looking at this reference, I see that we have uh, amber-like glow um, on the edges of the rose and in inside areas of the rose. But it's also not consistent. 
it's um, you know broken down, br broken up with a noise, uh, and all of it sits on this um, you know coal-like material, which has um, you know pretty um, pretty strong um, bump texture on it. So let's start with that black coal material, and for that I'm going to create material. I'm going to uh, delete all the materials from my rows and apply that material um, on it. So I already um, have that uh, material downloaded from uh, Megascans. Um, usually, if you have Megascan Bridge, it's very easy. You can just drop material. It's, it works super easy. Uh, but here, I'm just going to demonstrate like uh, the method with just bringing actual textures. Um, so I'm going to go click on my textures and bring those three uh, textures into my material editor. OK. Here they are. That is my normal. That is my albedo, which is my diffuse contribution. And this is roughness. Uh, what I like um, about uh, this material editor, I can click on this S uh, letter. and without applying it to the surface, to the material, I can see um, how it's going to look like on my object. So right now, um, uh, my model has some UVs, but they're kind of all over the place. They're different scaled. Um, and I want it to be consistent. So for that, if you're familiar with that, try Planner is your best friend. So obviously, there's other ways to do that. You can just apply it and change, for example, your um, UE mapping to, let's say, cubic. And it will change the look. Um, but I want this material to be drag and drop. I want, I, I want to be able to drag, drag this material to anything and for my UVs to look correct. So I'm going to use Tri Planner. So I'm going to uh, connect my uh, normal to my image X. Uh, look at my Tri Planner through uh, this solo. and. Um, you see how all the textures are consistent right now. I'm going to um, adjust my blend amount to 1. And I'm going to change it from object to world. So I can th throw it on every object, uh, and it looks the same. Uh, and I'm going to adjust my scale to 0.2, so it's a little, a little bit uh, smaller. Cool. And uh, let's uh, connect it to my bump. This is, this is this is my normal. Uh, this is bump contribution. So let's bring in bump map. I uh, connect it and connect it. And let's see how it looks. So you, you can see that something is happening. We have some kind of bump, but it's not correctly set up. So uh, every time you see this kind of purple material, uh, it means it requires a little bit different setup. Uh, also, right now, I have both things selected. I don't know what, what kind of glitch is it. But uh, in order to um, get over it, you just need to click shift Control a and it will deselect everything. So I'm going to switch to my normal. And I need to adjust uh, normal from auto to raw. And it will get this lighter color. And in my tri uh, not tri planner, in my bump, I need to change it to uh, tangent space. Tangent space? Tangent, tangent space. Um, and you see that bump on the rows got much stronger. It just looks right. Um, and I'm going to uh, adjust the height scale to two to just make it even, you know, to have this cool, um, like stronger bump on the rows. OK, so uh, that is done. Uh, let's connect roughness. So roughness is uh, the same as um, my um, normal is a row. So let's change, switch it to row. Uh, let's uh, duplicate tri planner with control and connect it to roughness and uh, connect it to roughness. OK, and so now the only thing which is left is uh, our diffuse contribution. So uh, let's grab our albedo uh, 
and do the same with Tri Planner again. So bringing it to color. Okay, so uh, that is our base uh, material for the um, our like coal look. Um, and right now, uh, because our you know material color change, I see that lighting actually is too dark. I need to um, bump up my um, intensity of my uh, dome light. So I'm going to uh, go into intensity and change it to, let's say, 0.5. And maybe to adjust area light a little bit, let's say 1. OK, this is better. Um, and now uh, let's get to the fun part. So um, let's create this ember-like look uh, in that example I shown you earlier. Uh, let's take a look at it again. Again, so edges and inner parts, and it all broken down with noise. So let's recreate it. I'm going to cre uh, create curvature. So I'm, I'm, I'm just pushing this down to uh, make myself some space uh, for my nodes. So I'm, I'm going to bring curvature. Curvature. Again, I'm going to uh, solo it. And that is um, curvature on uh, my rows. I'm going to adjust my radius to point, point 0.1. And you see it's already kind of getting where I want. I want those edges to be um, to be the only um, areas which are affected. So I'm going to also adjust my bias and gain a little bit. OK. So um, this is good, but how can, I, how can I break it up with noise? For that, I'm going to bring my layers. So layer, color layer. And this is very similar to Photoshop where you uh, just have different contributions, and they layered uh, one on top of another with a mask. So I'm going to bring this uh, curvature as my uh, base uh, color. And if I uh, select it right now, solo it, it looks uh, just black, because my uh, layer one is enabled, and it's black. So see, this is the contribution of uh, this black layer on top of our, our curvature. Um, so in order to uh, break it up with the noise, I'm going to create the noise and feed it into this mask. So only some areas are visible and some areas are not. So let's um, bring noise. So I'm going to bring uh, Maxon noise. And um, again, solid. And uh, let's change the size of my noise, scale of it. Uh, scale, scale, scale. Here it is. Uh, to 200? No, 100. And uh, let's change the noise type to uh, wavy turbulence. And um, bring it as my mask. And let's see. So this is without mask, with mask. And uh, actually, you can control it. Like this, is, this will be better to see. So this is brightness one, means this black layer completely overrides what's underneath it. This is brightness zero. We see that back layer completely. And uh, this is brightness you know, in between. So only some areas are adjusted. And if we um, bring contrast even more, you see how that edge is broken in some places. So um, if you want to see more of those edges, you just uh, drag brightness back. And if you want to see less of those edges, you uh, bring brightness up. OK, I'm happy with, the, with this result. Um, let's bring second layer, which is, if you look at it. So we just created those little outlines, right? Uh, let's create this um, inside glow. So uh, for that, I'm going to bring another curvature. It's all curvatures, lots of curvatures. So. Let's bring another curvature. And this time, we're going to change uh, our mode from uh, convex to concave. And uh, let's, do, let's change it to two. So you see how inner areas are now um, highlighted. And let's uh, adjust our uh, bias and gain again a little bit. 
So I'm just playing with uh, numbers still. I visually like what I see. And same deal, we're going to feed this to our color. And uh, we're going to break it up with the noise. So I'm just duplicating the same noise, noise with control and connecting it to color. And right now, nothing is changing if I click on this material because my layer 2 is not activated. So I'm going to activate it. And you see that those uh, inner areas are now visible. But they are, they are being um, masked by exactly the same noise, and I want it to be not the same. So I'm just going to change the seed number. So it's different. Uh, let me see. Let me show you what it does. So this is our mask of our, our noise, and when I uh, change the seed number, it just randomizes it. Okay. So I'm looking at it right now. I I want a little bit more. Oh, one thing I forgot. So you want to change uh, your uh, layer two. You want to switch it to add. So it's not only overrides what's underneath it. It uh, brings it on the to the add. So it just adds to what you already had. Um, let's um, add color to our, to our um, uh, effect. So for that, we're going to bring ramp. And this is ramp. And uh, let's use one of the presets. So I'm going to go with flame, flame one. I'm going to connect my uh, existing thing to alt input. And that's how it looks. If it feels a little strong, the cool thing, you can, uh, you can hit control. It's almost there, sorry. OK, well, you, you, you can adjust a little bit of your, uh, uh, of your gradient. And let's uh, connect it to our emission in materials. So if you uh, go in here, you have overall setting, and uh, there is an emission. So uh, we're going to um, feed this uh, into our emission by show in node editor and um, bring it in here, emission. And now let's see our actual material. We do not see any changes because we need to change the weight. Let's change it to one or two. So now it looks like it's on fire. Um, you see our bump disappeared. That is, this is just a glitch. If I um, restart my render, the bump is back. So um, that's um, you know the base for my um, coal material. So now I can drop this material to any object, and it will look like a, like coals. Um, but what's cool? Um, because it's it's emission driven. Uh, when I add depth of field, we will get a very nice bokeh. So let's uh, bring some depth of field. So I'm going to uh, go to my camera and I'm going to adjust my uh, lens effects, not lens effects, my optical, and uh, say bokeh. And uh, let's uh, um, change our aperture to two. And you see that now we have uh, depth of field. And the smaller the number, the stronger the depth of field. Um, but obviously, now our object is not in, uh, in focus. How can we make it uh, in focus? We either can uh, click in here, click to focus, and just pick whenever you want to be in focus. But um, what's bad about this method, if, for example, we zoom out, it's not in focus again. So I want it to be in focus no matter what. So let's create a focus. Uh, Null. So I created a null, and I'm going to uh, change the name to focus. I'm going to uh, click on this tool in here, and I'm going to select uh, this places my invisible object uh, in wherever I want. And we're going to uh, include it into my um, camera. So let me uh, get to the a second. So object in my um, camera. And now, wherever I place my focus, my uh, that becomes 
you know, the uh, focal point of my camera. And it doesn't matter uh, where I am. It always focuses in there. So, but I want it to be um, on a rose. And maybe to uh, boost it just a little bit more. So maybe point, point 0.6 or something. And let's say you want to have um, not regular bokeh, but elongated bokeh, like, you know, um, more um, um, cinematic look. So uh, you can do that in adjusting um, your, your aspect to 0 0.66. And um, this will be more clear when I um, will bring embers around, and we will see individual little lights. And you can, I'll show you how, the, um, how it changes. So let's bring those embers. In order to uh, create this uh, you know, field of embers, I'm going to uh, use capsule. So let's adjust the size of the capsule. Um, elongate it a little bit and um, feed it into cloner. So feeding it into cloner, adjusting the um, numbers so it's a little you know, closer together. So maybe 20, 20, 20. And uh, size uh, like 7, 7, 7. And uh, let's um, make every capsule um, kind of like random, randomly shaped. So for that, I'm going to bring uh, my um, displacer, uh, drop it into the capsule. And I'm going to bring noise into my um, noise into my capsule. So you see how it distorted uh, the, the capsule, but now they all are the same. And that is because my um, need to change the mode. Give me a second. So all right now, if I go inside of my noise, it says space texture. So if I change it to world. Now it's all random, and I, I like it. I, I, I want it to be more random. I'm, I'm going to adjust the uh, scale of my noise to uh, much smaller. And I'm going to also adjust the size of my capsule. I know it looks funny. That's kind of like the, the whole purpose. I, um, I'm going to adjust material on those embers, and I want it to I, I want them to be um, more organic looking. So adjusting the scale again a little bit. And displacer maybe is a little too strong. So uh, let's adjust height to, let's say, 1.5. Um, and now let's bring some randomness to this field. Uh, let's go to MoGraph and Effector and Random. So um, go to Parameters and uh, adjusting the space between all those embers. So let's say um, 150, maybe 100, 100, 100. And also a rotation. So I want it to be completely random. So 360, 360, 360. And um, scale too. So uniform scale, make it random. And I'm going to adjust the um, capsule size even smaller. And now let's create material, burning ember material for this capsule. So um, I'm going to create material, apply it to my capsule. Uh, let's select only one. And for now, let's remove uh, our bokeh. So um, I'm going to optical and I'm going to deselect it. Um, and uh, let's. Uh, pick uh, only one uh, ember, uh, go to material, and I'm going to bring ramp. So my favorite ramp, it's so versatile. Um, and I'm going to, again, solo it and change my um, uh, source to UV map. And I'm going to make it circular. So um, let me uh, even um, increase the size of uh, what's happening there. Well, let's switch to uh, fixed scale, and uh, I'm going to change it to uh, 200. And um, yeah, so uh, now uh, when we are in circular, I, I'm going to control uh, opacity 
um, with this uh, with this ramp. So I'm going to uh, flip it, and you see how um, this like most of uh, my uh, ember disappears. And let me feed it into overall opacity. So now only small parts of my particles are visible, and they are um, less uh, capsule looking. And uh, let's adjust this ramp even more. So make it even tighter. And um, the same effect, let's uh, bring our, um, let's duplicate it and uh, uh, load preset and uh, change it to flame. And uh, uh, the same as with rows, we're going to go to overall and change um, our emission from black to that, to emission. Uh, let's uh, see how it looks. We need to invert gradient. Oh, no, actually, it was correct. Let's, let's compare. Nope, we needed to invert it. And let's turn emission to 1. And um, let's remove other contribution from the material. So um, no, no diffuse, no reflection. We don't need any of this. We only want uh, this light. So um, and. I'm going to make this uh, gradient tighter. So I, I, I want to see more red. Like this looks uh, more like uh, amber to me. So change the scale to 100. And now, you know, we, we have all, all those nice particles. Um, Again, I'm, I'm going to adjust the size of it a little bit because it's, it's too strong. And I'm going to add um, more randomness in my scale. So some particles are smaller, some particles are bigger. And adjust the scale even more. And now, when I turn on my um, camera, um, Boca, so um, as you can see, those embers turning into nice elongated uh, bokeh, and uh, that elongation comes from this 0.6, um, uh, 0.6 size. Um, something happened with my focus; is for some reason not on the rows anymore. So let's bring it back to the rows. Uh, maybe it fell from interesting. Okay. Um, so. Um, that's how you create amber looking uh, scene. And um, maybe let's adjust it even more. What's really cool about creating this amber field, when you have a camera moving through it, it really brings this sense of space to it. So um, let me show you again the example. So you see how those uh, flying particles add extra spatial awareness to the scene. And um, also, if you feel especially, you know, um, playful, let's adjust again. This is a little too much right now, the blur. So to maybe 1, maybe even 1.5. Um, you also can uh, play with lens effects. So um, if you want, you can add a little bit of uh, bloom. So um, areas which are um, especially emissive, uh, you can have that bloom around it. Right now, you do not see it because you need to adjust uh, threshold. So if I'm reducing my uh, threshold, the smaller it gets, let's uh, drop it, um, uh, threshold uh, gets stronger. So uh, that's um, so that's bloom. That's uh, pretty fun when uh, you have a strong um, source of light in a scene. Um, also, if you uh, want to play with animation, uh, you can adjust uh, in this setting, you can adjust maximum uh, noise uh, speed, and um, that will create this. If you see here my um, glow, 
kind of changes throughout. That's uh, because it's animated, animated noise. Um, yeah, and um, if you want to also add um, some uh, speed, some kind of an, uh, animation to your field, uh, you can add. You can. You can add, uh, let's say, uh, MoGraph plane. So um, and you can add a shader and make it shader field. Sorry. Anyway, I'm I'm sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can adjust the um, uh, add an animation to this uh, field of uh, embers with a plane effector, uh, which uh, been done in here. And I uh, encourage you to play with uh, Pyro; it's really fun. Um, uh, also, if you want to check out uh, previous effects, uh, which I did yesterday, this is the same uh, tools, but you know, different way of using it. So uh, creating something more liquid-like or ice-like. Um, again, something ice-like. And um, yeah, so um, I hope it was helpful. Uh, I hope you liked it. Um, and again, uh, you can find me here uh, on my Instagram. Uh, and Maxon, thank you so much for inviting me again. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sasha. We really appreciate it. Great presentation. All right. Before you run off, does anybody have any questions? We want to make sure that we answer any questions that anyone might have. That was wonderful. Great use of the ramp node. That was really great. I'm learning Redshift myself, so I'm sure I'm going to be watching this a couple times. So, How much better did you get through just this? Yeah, and maybe just this year. How much better do I get? I'm, yeah. I'm going to just you, you, wait and you, see. You must be an expert at this I, point. Yeah, <laughs> I'm coming for you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming out. We're going to be live again tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. So uh, I want to thank everyone online on the live stream for tuning in. And uh, be sure to stick around. Sasha will be behind uh, the booth here at our demo stations answering some questions and uh, showcasing some of our new tools. So thanks so much, Sasha. Thank cool. you so much for watching. Thanks, everyone.